if others are doing it, don't limit yourself. Don't be too afraid to not go beyond what Amazon allows. Hello, I'm your host, John Cavendish, and welcome back to the Amazon Strategist Show, the show that's all strategy with no hacks, no silver bullets, and no magic pills, just real practical strategies to grow your Amazon business. So today, I'm joined by none other than Kamal Singh, who's the CEO and founder of AMZ One Step. He's also an official member of the Forbes Council, so if you want to hear him, hear what he likes to say, Google him, and I'm sure he'll come up on Forbes. He began his journey back in 2015 with Retail Arbitrage and then private label after that before selling that business in 2018. In 2022, he expanded his influence by acquiring Kenji ROI, which um, if I think we've had Danny on the podcast a couple of years ago, which was one of the leading Amazon creative agencies back then, and I guess still is. Under his leadership, AMZ One Step has done over 100,000 images, and um, he's also really big into community and organizes meetups all across his uh, home of Canada. So Kamal, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, John. Super excited to be here. I'm excited to talk about you know creatives and conversions. So thanks for thanks for having me. Yeah, we love all of the you know deep strategic stuff here at the Amazon Strategy Show. So um, I guess diving right into it, like how did you get into Amazon in the first place? Yeah, it was um, you know I was trying to learn forex exchange from a friend of mine and uh, you know he was like posting like his successful trades every single day on snapchat hey i made hundred dollars you know i made like two hundred dollars today like easy trades so i was kind of very curious like how is he doing it he used to be my roommate i was like man like if we went to same college we lived in the same you know house if he can learn something new and make money why can't i i felt like i was wasting a lot of time i was going in the wrong direction you know I approached him. I was like, hey, man, teach me how you do this. He said, it's going to be $2,000, which means 2,600 Canadian back in the days. And I did not have any money at that time. You know, I somehow I got a couple of friends to chip in and buy his course. And then, um, you know, I could not understand like those candlesticks, you know, those charts and everything. You know, two days later, I was like, okay, this is not for me. You know, I, I, I need to find something unique. I need to find something which is working. And I somehow remember somebody talking about Amazon FBA, like in, you know, three years then uh, back then, then I was like, aha, let me find out what this is about. So then I searched on, you know, YouTube, how to sell on Amazon. Then I spent like three months and watched thousands of videos and made my seller account, you know, started doing retail arbitrage, you know, but back of my mind, it was, I was always thinking that I want to teach others like how to sell on Amazon or I want to help Amazon sellers just like what my friend was doing by posting, you know, screenshots of like how he was making money. So that kind of led me to uh, start Amazon FBA and also start my Amazon agency. I was doing meetups and everything. So people were asking me like, hey, where do you get your photos and where do you get your images done? Like and videos, PPC, that kind of gave me an idea to start the Amazon agency and uh, Danny used to be pretty big at that time. So I kind of copied him, watched, you know, his podcast, his blogs, you know, website. I told my developer like, hey, copy this guy, like, you know, whatever he's doing on his website, I want to sell the same services. So just to connect back with that. So that, you know, that's how I got started with Amazon FBA. Awesome. Cool. That's a really good story that, you know, you, you launched a business, you're inspired by someone and eventually acquired their business. That's really cool. Exactly. Yeah, that was very, you know, kind of uh, emotional acquisition as well. So super proud <laughs> of that. Nice. It's like when you look at your heroes, you grow like your heroes, then you eat your heroes. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, cool. Awesome. So, I mean, out of everyone I've ever talked to, you've probably, or at least your company has, done the most Amazon images of anyone I've ever met. So what are some insights you've had from, from doing that, from uh, working on so many images? Okay, so the biggest uh takeaway that i can you know i can give you guys is you know after creating so many images the only image that matters the most is your main image because your main image is the gateway to your listing right you spend thousands of dollars on ppc right you spend so much money doing you know seo trying to get ranked by doing giveaways but that is all of no use if you don't get a click so so the main image you know is the most important image in your image tag. So spend as much time as you possibly can 
on the main image, trying to split test, see which one is the better main image, which can get you extra click through rate. That also, you know, means, which means like lower CPC on your PPC, you know, better organic results. And one key takeaway I would like to give on the main image that the main purpose of the main image is to increase traffic, but also to decrease the irrelevant traffic. So purpose is increase the relevant traffic and decrease the irrelevant traffic so that less people, like people who don't want your product, it filters out. Your main image should be like, hey, this is not for you. And when more people click on your listing, they are very likely to buy that, which means your conversion goes up. That also helps you in organic ranking, better PPC results, like with everything. So that is the 80-20 Pareto principle. There's like 80-20 and your main image, that 20% also has 80-20 in it. And that's your main image, like it's 496 to, if you could think of. So that's my main takeaway. And there are like different strategies that you can use to make your main image stand out. So, so, so the goal, main goal of the main image is to break the pattern from the search results. When somebody searches for a keyword on Amazon, your main image should stand out like instantly. So that is the whole goal of the main image. So just work around that. Everything else also matters, your video A plus content, your secondary images, your copy, but this is something which has the highest value, right? So that's my takeaway from after creating like, you know, hundreds of thousands of images. Nice. Yeah, I like that as well. Is the opposite also possible then? Is it possible if you get it wrong to create an image that will increase traffic but reduce conversions? Yeah, that that does happen. I, I think I see that very often. Like, for example, when we work on an existing listing and we change the creative, sometimes what happens, your traffic just goes up and your conversions goes down. That just means that your main image is not attracting you know, the relevant traffic enough. And it's also attracting, you know, the non-buyers or irrelevant people that you don't want. So you just got to split test your main image, you know, see what works the best. And um, so that is the only solution to that. But I, I see that very commonly. But before you, you know, upload your main image, I highly recommend that you split test on, on you know, external software like PicFu, IntelliV, and then also use manage your experiments on Seller Central so that you don't lose much of conversions for a very long period of time so that you can instantly make decisions which are, you know, data driven. Cool. Yeah, I love that. And then are you actually tracking that ratio then? When you were changing an image, are you tracking the ratio of, um, well, I mean, basically just conversion rate, isn't it? So you're tracking the changing conversion rate and also the overall sales. And do you care more about overall sales or do you care more about it having a really high conversion rate? You know, we mainly 90% of the time we care about the increase in sales, but sometimes we see increase in sales, but uh, they start to lose like ranking, organic ranking. If that starts to play an impact, you know, that's the time, you know, we take a look and be like, you know, do some more investigation. But 90% of the time, it's just the more sales. If, if your sales goes up, that's that's all it matters. But sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, your sales just go up by, you know, PPC because your PPC is very focused but your organic ranking is going down so so it's kind of you know we track it based on how fast you know overall tackles right if, if your tackles is also going up you know then that means that our main image is bringing a lot of irrelevant traffic that we might mm. need to make some changes cool perfect um that sounds great changing lanes slightly when i was reading up about you i heard about your label it strategy but i'm not really sure what it is so can you can you take us through that Yes, there are like 14 different strategies that I normally talk about, um, you know, on how to make your main image stand out. But what is working really, really well is label it strategy. So what does that mean? Uh, basically, you add your unique selling proposition or your main keyword onto the product packaging and do it in a natural way so that it does not violate Amazon terms of service. That is one way. Or if your product does not come in a product packaging, you can also create a you know fake label around it, right? Which just tells about your product, you know, unique selling proposition or or the main keyword. So that way, you know, your main image just stands out. So try not to make your you know um, make your label in such a way so that people would leave you a bad review or they think that they have got a wrong product. 
right? So do it in a natural way so that you don't change the expectations of people, but also you get your main image stand out. So that is working really, really well. You might have noticed, you know, lots of, you know, product packaging. They put like, you know, for example, if you're searching for a protein powder on Amazon, you know, a lot of sellers, they have put like 25 gram or unflavored, you know, made it bigger. But in reality, it's not really there, but they're just leveraging the label or the packaging to tell people what exactly are they going to get, which means, you know, two purposes again, you know, they, it makes your main image stand out and it also brings in the relevant traffic. So that's what has been working really, really well. And the, another example I could give, for example, if your product does not have a product packaging, think of like chopping boards or cutting boards. You know, you would see if you search on Amazon, like cutting boards or Gorilla Grip, that's a brand which is absolutely killing it with the strategy. You know, you can, it just, you can see that they have created a label around the cutting boards and it does not even change your expectations because everybody just knows that it's not going to arrive with the product, that label. And it, it's not even such a big factor that they would leave a bad review just because the label wasn't there. So that's that's what we call a label it strategy and it's been working every single time. And now it has started to get popular. If you do see your competitors are also using something similar, then you know, you got to stack it up with multiple other strategies. So there's like so many strategies uh, that you can, you know, uh, used to make your main image stand out but the whole purpose is again to to stand out to look different love it cool so yeah i guess i want you to go and check out gorilla group and see how they're using it now i mean would this be on like are you just you know photoshopping the main image do you still using many renders like how does that how's that usually work for you yeah you can you can do it with photoshop as well uh you know you can make make changes uh, there are like really good designers out there that can that can do the job with Photoshop. But 3D rendering is also one of the strategies that we use. For example, some type of products, if it's a hard surface product, if it's a metal or if it's a transparent product or reflective product, use 3D rendering because that's going to make your image look so much sharper, right? And you can stack it up with other strategies. Maybe use 3D rendering and then you can also use label it strategy on 3d rendering itself and if your product for example does have variations you can use like you know you can add variations on the side or you can show product in action or you can you know show a model you know using your product within the main image so there are like so many things that you can do like you can stack up lot, lots of things like 3d rendering can be mixed and matched with lots of other things if that mm. makes sense cool. nice are you back in the day amazon was trying to push out 3d rendering wasn't it like several years ago I mean, what's their opinion on 3D rendering now? According to their terms of service, they don't want any illustrations. You know, they want the actual product photos. Mm. But you know, 3D 3D rendering is an illustration. It's it's not a real image. But Amazon also cares a lot about you know the user experience, right? So they they do want shoppers to see like high quality, real good pictures. So Amazon, I have never seen any listing taken down. Uh, just because it was 3D rendered, uh, as long as it looks real, looks natural, uh, and even though it's against their TOS, but still it's just been, you know, working perfectly fine. Okay, yeah, and again, we go with what works <laughs> rather than uh, what they say. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about um, label it strategy, increasing traffic, monitoring conversion rates, 3D rendering. Um, is there anything else about increasing traffic that anyone should be thinking about yeah, while looking at their main image? There's other factors that you know that you can probably you know leverage to increase your traffic. There's like six or six or seven different factors which are responsible. Number one is your which is the biggest one, your main image. Second one is your product title. Make sure your product title is mobile optimized. And the other factors like your price point, your fulfillment method. You know, what kind of badges do you have, like bestseller badge or Amazon choice badge? Or if you are in the editorial sections or special categories by Amazon. So coupon codes or like promotions that you're running, these are all like part of increasing your click, click through rate or traffic, right? So um, I think it's there's no just like one thing which will work best. Use all of them. Like it's just like 1% improvement by every single thing you do. And the main image is the biggest one, obviously. So these are some of the things that you can do to increase your traffic, um, you know, on Amazon without spending more on ads or like driving external traffic. Hmm. 
Awesome. Yeah. And that's super, super helpful. I mean, that's what I like about doing short episodes of people who are an expert on one thing. You know, so people can actually take away actionable items to to implement in their business tomorrow, you know? So if you are listening, I would encourage you to think how this applies to your listings and how you can change one listing and do an A-B test, whether it's using you know, Amazon experiments, whether it's using PicFu to see uh, yeah, see if it increases people's uh, engagement and conversion. So we're now going into the controversial take part of the episode. So in this part, we basically ask you, do you have any debatable or controversial takes when it comes to uh, selling on Amazon, whether that's to do with what we're talking about or actually anything else? in the Amazon seller space? Yeah, there's like so many things which are debatable, but one of my favorite topics is, you know, obviously the main image and traffic. So I was, I posted on LinkedIn, you know, one of the SOPs on how to create a main image. Okay, so it was like a different layers of like one image, then you add a second layer, third layer, fourth layer. And by the end, we added made in USA label on the product packaging, right? So. You know, since we're doing a podcast, I can't really show it visually. Just try to imagine there's a supplement bottle and right behind the supplement bottle, there's a product packaging, okay? So there's no white space between the bottle and the packaging. So we we managed to add Made in USA label right in the middle and it passed the suppression test, okay? So I was like, okay, hey, this is a cool way of creating a main image. This helped us increase our CTR by this much you know, feel free to use this uh, or steal this method. And then I got like, you know, some comments like, hey, my main image will be suppressed or or this is against Amazon terms of service. Okay, number one, I do agree that you want to have something as a backup in case your Amazon does, Amazon main image does get suppressed. You always have a backup image so that you can upload it right away. Make sure you have the notifications on like alerts, if, if your listing is suppressed, you change change it back to the good image like right away. That's the safety net you want to have. Number two, if Amazon has different rules for different categories, you will see like lifestyle images in the main image, you know, that's like totally against Amazon terms of service. But some categories you do see that, which is quite common. In some categories, everybody is perfectly Amazon compliant. So there's different rules for different categories. If your competitors are using, you know, uh, shady ways or gray hat methods, feel free to do that. Push your limits. Going back to the point, we use the made in USA label in the product packaging. One of the comment I got, hey, show me this listing. Uh, you're lying. This, this cannot be true. Amazon would suppress it right away. I posted a screenshot in the comments. I was like, okay, there you go. And we're running ads on it. And the ads were like number one and number two position for two products. So so my point is, you know, if others are doing it, don't limit yourself, you know, don't be too too afraid to not go beyond, you know, what Amazon allows. Secondary takeaway from the same point is try to use label strategy or graphics or anything that you're doing within the product packaging or product itself not on the white background. Otherwise, yeah, there's a very high chances that your image will be suppressed. So yeah, that's a that's a controversial thing on main image, like what's working, what's not. But yeah, so push your limits, have a basic image ready as a backup. Cool. I love that. And yeah, I mean, I, I think I agree. Like Amazon will send you messages sometimes, which sound like the end of the world. But I mean, that's what the white seller candy exists as well. Um, to be honest, which is when when they tell you, yes, we're going to suspend you, you're never coming back, and like, no, you just need to change the image. So um, I think that, yeah, I mean, being willing to test and being willing to push the envelope is why some sellers are very, very successful and why they sit at the top for a very long time because they're continuing to innovate and no one else is innovating past them. So yeah, it's really good. I like that. I like that controversial take. Thank you so much for being on the show. If people want to learn more about your other strategies as well as the label it and uh, or you know, reach out to you for your support, how is the best way to contact you? If you want to learn more about the other strategies, you can search for like main image optimization on Google. You will find my blog number one by AMZ One Step. Uh, you can read that. It's definitely worth a read and if you are looking to increase your click-through rate or conversions or launching a new product go to www.amz1step.com book a call you know uh see if we can help you out 
you know uh, so that's how you can get in touch with us uh, but yeah that's pretty much it or search on youtube 13 main image strategies or 14 main image strategies you will find a very in-depth like 60 minutes long video to talk about each and everything so i think that could be very helpful awesome thank you thank you for putting all those resources out there i know it's super useful when someone watches something like this to go and like okay i want to learn more let's go and binge all of your content uh, for the next five hours um, so awesome, Kamal, thanks so much for being here. And thanks to everyone else who's watched the show. So if you're watching on YouTube or whether that's uh, YouTube or uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please rate us and leave a review there. It helps with our rankings. And um, yeah, tune in next week when we have more amazing guests. So Kamal, thanks for being here. Thank you so much. It was a great show. Thank you so much.